Robin Murray. I'm a professor of psychiatric research at the Institute of Psychiatry in London. And today I'm going to talk about drugs that can increase the risk of psychosis. And of course, most of the attention has been given to cannabis. And unfortunately, people tend to polarize, either those who say that cannabis is entirely safe or, the, or those who say that a few puffs of cannabis will send you mad, I like reefer madness, will induce I instant madness. But of course, we need to look at the data. And the first proper data came from the Swedish Army study, and that was in 1987. And they showed that those people who had consumed very little cannabis by the time they were 18. There were 50,000 of these individuals conscripted into the Swedish army. Those who had smoked very little had only a very small risk of schizophrenia. But as you can see at the other end of the slide, the more cannabis that you'd taken, then the more was your risk of schizophrenia. So if you'd taken cannabis more than 50 times, your risk of schizophrenia over the next 15 years was increased about six times. Now, that was way back in 1987, and there were no more studies until uh, 2002. And in 2002, there started a whole range of studies which essentially replicated the work of the Swed Swedish Army study. If you look down the last column in this, this is the odds ratio in the various studies of those who smoked cannabis versus those who didn't smoke cannabis. And you can see that most of the studies are suggesting it increases the risk two or three times. There's one outlier, but on average, if you're a smoker of cannabis, you double your risk of psychosis. But the more you smoke, the more you increase your risk. And the other factor that's important is when you start. In our study in New Zealand, if you started by age 18, by age 26, you were just slightly more likely to be psychotic. It was one and a half times. It wasn't significant. But if you started smoking cannabis at 15 or earlier, that increased your risk about four and a half times. And various other studies have also replicated that. So increasing the risk is increased the more cannabis you smoke, the earlier you smoke and also depending on what type of cannabis you smoke. For example, many of us were brought up in the days of traditional marijuana, weed, or hash resin, and they were quite weak. And they contain not only THC, but also CBD. And THC induces the high and also induces the perceptual changes and the psychosis, whereas CBD tends to ameliorate these symptoms. But in the modern types of cannabis, sometimes called sinsamila or skunk, there is much more, C much more THC, 17% on average, as opposed to about 4% in old-fashioned cannabis. And there is no CBD, so there's none of the countervailing uh, substance in which was in old-fashioned cannabis. And if you look in this slide, you can see that those individuals who rarely smoked hash or re resin, that showed, they showed very little increase in the risk of psychosis. But it was those individuals who smoked skunk every day who had particularly a high risk, a five times increase. So if you smoked skunk or sinsamila with a high THC, low CBD, even if you smoked it occasionally, it increased your risk, but it was the daily skunk smokers who were particularly likely to go psychotic. It's skunk, of course, is called skunk because it had a, has a strong smell like the animal. So it's now beyond discussion that cannabis increases the risk of psychosis and that higher potency types increase the risk further. But of course, most people who smoke cannabis don't come into any problems. It's a bit like alcohol. Most people who drink alcohol moderately never have any problems. Most people who smoke cannabis they moderately never have any problems. But if you try really hard smoking five joints of skunk a day, then this may in, in, increase your risk of psychosis if five or more times. A new event, of course, has been the arrival of synthetic cannabinoids. So THC, the active ingredient of old-fashioned cannabis, is a partial agonist at the CB1 receptor. 
but for about the last six years, it's been possible to buy on the, uh, on the street market or in the internet synthetic can cannabinoids. And they are not partial agonists for the CB1 receptor. They are full-blown agonists. So they have a much bigger effect. Curiously, many of them are legal. So uh, some young people who don't want to take an illegal drug take uh, synthetic cannabinoids instead. And of course, they get a much stronger uh, substance. And so synthetic cannabinoids are more likely to induce psychosis relatively rapidly and they induce a paranoid psychosis which has been called spisophrenia because these uh, synthetic cannabinoids are called spice. So the arrival of spice has meant that more people can go suddenly psychotic. What about other drugs? Well we've all known for very many years that amphetamines can cause psychosis for 60 years or more we've known this. But what about cigarette smoking? It's very common in people who <clears throat> are uh, psychotic. There's no doubt that psychotic patients smoke more than the normal population. Psychiatrists have usually thought that this was because the patients were trying to counteract their negative symptoms or counteract the side effects of antipsychotics. But if you look at our first episode study, if you look down the middle, the middle, the middle line here, you can see in the red that those people who uh, where patients with their first episodes of psychosis were much more likely than the controls, normal healthy people, to smoke cigarettes. Seventy percent of first episode psychotics were smoking tobacco as opposed to 47 percent of controls had, had ever smoked tobacco, I should say. Now, this was their first episode. They've never had antipsychotic drugs. They've never had psychotic symptoms before. So you cannot say that they're smoking in order to counteract the effects of their drugs or their negative symptoms. So it does raise the question of could cigarettes also be contributing to the risk of psychosis? There has been one big meta-analysis by Miles and his colleagues of first episode psychotics and this confirmed that in studies of first episode psychotics patients are much more likely to smoke uh, cigarettes than controls, but six times more likely. And that the beginnings of longitudinal studies which also say that the smoking comes first and then the psychosis later. So this raises the question, does cigarette smoking actually increase the risk of psychosis? We can't say for sure yet but I think it's going to be a hot topic over the next few years. Certainly, we as psychiatrists should not ignore the cigarette smoking by our patients. Not only is it bad for their physical health, but it also prolongs and exacerbates their psychosis. Thank you for listening.